everyone, my name is Tori, this is Nova Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about your hot takes, your bookish hot takes. So I did see a couple other content creators recently do this video, and I just thought it'd be fun to sit down and talk about your bookish hot takes and then chat about what they were. I, listen, I did a question box on my Instagram and an anonymous link, like the Not Gonna Lie app thing. You guys left a lot. Like it's been up for only like a little over 12 hours, but I'm not going to lie, you guys left a lot of hot takes. I did glance at some of them because I just wanted to see like what they were, and a lot of them made me giggle. I'm not going to lie, a lot of them made me giggle. You guys are absolutely hilarious. Before we dive into all of your bookish hot takes, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Ava Miles. Ava Miles has a brand new book that literally just came out on March 11th. It is called The Paris Roommates, Dean. This is Dean's story. And Dean is a venture capitalist that has left his hometown in California to go hang out with his Paris roommates. And there he meets someone who's super mysterious, who he really doesn't know much about, and Jacqueline is actually starting her own business so he finds her very interesting and very intriguing because of that but he's like how do I know if what I feel for her is real they have this intense connection but he's thinking how is this going to last how is this going to last is this love and he asks himself all of these questions so along with is she worth the risk is it worth you know having his heart broken again and him getting burned again and can he find his very own happily ever after so this is the second book in the Paris Roommate series. Like I said, it follows Dean. Each one of the books in the series is going to be one of the Paris Roommate story where they all come back together and they all see each other in Paris again and they all find their own different love stories. If you want to check out the Paris Roommates by Ava Miles, the link in the description box below will take you to purchase the ebook or the paperback. But make sure you check out this new release by Ava Miles now. And once again, thank you so much to Ava Miles for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's see what people say. Said. I have a lot. Okay. So what one major one that a lot of people talk about for hot takes is like covers. Stop changing covers or changing a cover mid-series. So this one says, I'm sick of all the cover changes. So sick. And I'm not gonna lie, like the only there's very few times where I'm like, I don't mind when an author does a cover change if like their covers are very old. So it's like older books that they want to like redo the covers for um, or when they get picked up, like they get picked up and they want to change the cover, whether it's in their contract or they want to or the publisher wants to anyway. Like those are the ones where I'm like, eh, OK, that's fine. No shade, no tea type of a thing. But where authors will publish a book and within like the year they change it or like six months they've changed it to like a different type of cover. I'm I'm fine with whatever, like just stick to one and I'm good with it. I don't mind the alternate covers. Like if you have a couple cover and then you have a discrete cover, I don't mind that as long as they come out at the same time. So like you can choose as a collector, obviously of books that you can choose which, um, like which cover you want to collect, the discrete or the people or both, whichever one. So that one was really funny. That one made me giggle. Hot people over cartoon co cartoons, flowers, title in bold. Give me the people on the cover any day. I will say there are some people covers, like guy covers specifically, that they just look awkward. Like they don't, they don't look like the character I envisioned when I'm reading the book. So like that's when I'm like, eh, whatever. I prefer the discreet cover. Um, but I'm always of like hot people, couple on cover, sexy covers. Give me all of that. I am someone who, I don't know why discreet becomes like a thing. Don't get me wrong. There are discreet covers that are very pretty and like I can appreciate them, but I personally love guy covers, people covers, maybe because that's what like my romance reading journey was people on the cover. Like a lot of the spicier romances that I started reading was more hot guys on covers, couple on covers in a sexy pose, whatever. But I do understand that Amazon has gotten really particular about what kind of people are on your cover. So like, for example, if you have like a too sexy cover, like too much of the guy's abs are showing, or if you have a couple that's in a very like compromising position, they may like allude to like a sex scene, which we love. Those can get like temporary banned or like they won't push them. So from a business standpoint, I kind of understand it. But like from a consumer standpoint, I, I do love that guy covers. I do. I do love them. Don't get me wrong. So that's funny. Someone said I'm sick of all the MMF and reverse harem or like 
why choose reverse harem don't use that term it's why choose now i guess i am someone who for why choose maybe because i'm fucking late on the game i don't know i just got into why choose i just read pucking around by emily rath in december and i really loved that book i had a great time with it i read twilight of embers and that is a why choose dragon shifter romance and so i, I don't know like I, I don't i don't know maybe i'm on the you know late train of it I, d I never mind an mmf or like a polyamorous like a thruple i never minded those because most of the time like you can figure out their relationship like it's easier when you have like five people it gets complicated but i will say a lot of people love those like though those you know like why choose stuff has been around for three four years now they've gotten really popular in the last two to three years so like i could tell why people why some people might be like over them they're like give me something new i'm over them like stop putting everyone in a why choose situation you know because sometimes you got to choose. Sometimes some people got to choose, okay? Can't just why choose all the time. <laughs> I make myself giggle. Okay, so this one made me laugh out loud. Like literally when I saw this last night, I really laughed out loud. Okay, it says white white bookshelves are the Stanley Cups of bookshelves. <laughs> Y'all, I have I have my bookshelves. <laughs> Uh, I do not own a Stanley. I own like Simply Modern. This is like from Hello Lovely. These are the only cups I own. I've never bought a Stanley like by myself. Like, I don't know. I just never, I don't want to spend $40 on a cup if I don't have to. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I like the white bookshelves over black. I, I have had black bookshelves before, but I think in videos, if it's too dark, it just darkens everything. So I think the white makes it brighter. I don't know. That's just me. But this made me giggle because I'm like, you're not wrong. Everyone Everyone and their mother has white bookshelves, okay? Most people do. But also everyone and their mother has a Stanley. So like if you go to the gym, there's so many Stanleys. It's ridiculous. Okay, that one made me laugh out loud a lot. Okay, people who hate read books don't make any sense to me. Like why would you read a book just to bash on it? I understand this. I like, I like to play devil's advocate in both. I 100% understand this. Uh, I don't understand why people hate read books. If you go into a book knowing that you're gonna hate it, like me, I'm not gonna go into a book most of the time with why choose because most of the time I don't like them or I'm not going to go into a book knowing that there is not an HEA because I'm hate reading it I don't like it when they don't have an HEA you know what I mean so I don't know like I understand that people like just there's some people like content creators that just like to hate read things and hate read as in like why do you continue reading romance why do you continue continue reading blank whatever genre you want to put in there just to hate on it I don't understand. Now, as a content creator, I hate DNFing because if I'm 50% a book, I want it to count as like read on my Goodreads. So I continue reading it, but I might give it like a lower rating if that makes sense. So that's not a hot take. I feel like I feel like a lot of people feel like that. Some people take rating books too seriously. A book doesn't it a book doesn't need to have Shakespeare writing for it to be a good book. So I think this honestly is a hot take because a lot of people have an opinion on this. And I'm someone that I'm like if if you read a book and it gives you good vibes and you just had the best time reading it, rate it a 5 star. You know what I mean? I'm someone I will rate things a 5 star based on vibes. Like vibes all around. You know what I mean? Like I will rate something high if I emotionally connected with one of the characters, even though some people may not emotionally, other people might not emotionally connect to the characters. You know what I mean? So I understand this and I get it, but there are some people who love to read for the writing specifically. They want that Shakespeare writing. They want pristine writing and that's okay too. Like it's either way, it's okay. But the next two are about influencers, which is funny. Many, many influencers don't actually like reading or care about the books. They don't even read the books sent to them or any book it's all for show and I will say I have someone who I get books sent to me and even though they're sent to me when I read them I rate them a hundred percent honestly like to the point where I've gotten a PR box and I actually DNF'd the book because I wanted to read it and I DNF'd it and I had to email them and say I appreciate you sending me this book I'm DNFing it I don't know if you want to send me any more I don't know if it'd be fair to send me more that's happened and I've done that I think that some people take you know as a content creator influencer you can get wrapped up about stuff but I'm someone who I created my channel because I love reading it's something that I enjoy doing I love re relaxing I love talking about books with people I love dissecting books um in a way or for the writing for the plot for the characters for the emotions for the vibes all of the above right so it's interesting that some people think about that also, someone said book influencers lie about top 100 books because they are popular and they don't want to get on the wrong side of big authors. That's a 
very hot take. I am not gonna lie. So while this is actually a really big hot take that I think a lot of people feel this way about certain creators, I don't know if this is any shade towards me. I hope not because I don't really do this. Um, this is one of the main reasons I'm not on like PR or like ARC teams. I don't, I don't really know. I'm on some PR teams because like PR is mostly just to share the photos and stuff like that but like arcs and stuff i have a really hard time being on someone's arc team and i have to be on an arc team that like i've been a fan of their stuff for a while i don't just like hop on every person's arc team if that makes sense just to get an early copy i usually get them from netgalley only because my netgalley approval rate is like shit but i just i don't know i i feel like i don't like doing that i don't feel like pressured to read stuff during a certain period of time too like if i'm pressured to read something for like a deadline, then I'll rush to read it and I don't like doing that. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think like, I don't know. This is a very hot take. I don't know what to say about it. It's a very hot take. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. The last anonymous one is cheating in books is worse than any subtrope in dark romance, like unaliving. I'm someone I do not like cheating in books. I do not understand it. It, does, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I, it's, I can't even tell you Okay, I will say Magnolia Parks. That is the only book where there is cheating. Uh, BJ has cheated on Magnolia. That is the only, only one that I've read where they cheat. And I was not on board until you find out certain reasons why. So interesting. Interesting that people have this take. Okay, so now we're going to get into the ones that were on Instagram. I'm not going to say anyone's name or anything like that. So someone said, I'm sick of all the tropes being listed and basically spoiling every single thing. This, there's a difference of like, okay, I read a book recently and it has secret and surprise baby, right? The woman did not know she was pregnant. Something happens. They break up and she keeps it a secret from him for a while until it's a second chance romance. I personally do not say that it's secret and surprise baby. If I have, it was, it's been a mistake. I try to keep that a secret because it is such a big plot twist in the book that it makes like you're like, oh my God, I didn't really see that coming. Or it's like alluded to and you're like, is this really it? Is this really going to have it? So I list tropes out that are the main ones. Enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, MMA, stuff like that. If I think it's going to ruin someone's experience, I try not to put it in there, if that makes sense. Just because I feel like it's like a, you know, like you don't have to list every single thing. Um, but I get that. I get that totally get that. So someone said Kindles are for reading physical books are trophies. And I 100% agree with this. 100%. Even if I have a physical book on my shelf, I will try and get the audiobook or the ebook. One, because I don't like physically holding books. They're too heavy for me. But also, I don't want to physically read a book if I don't have to. Like, I'm currently reading this book right now, right? I have a bookmark in it, but I'm reading it on my Kindle. <laughs> Like, I don't, I like to have a physical book to show you guys, uh, but also I like to have them on my shelves, clearly, clearly, but I 100% agree with this. Okay. When the book is unnecessarily long, yes, there are some books specifically in contemporary romances where I'm like, why is this book so fucking long? Why is this book over 400 pages? Why is this book over 450 pages in a contemporary romance? It does not need to be that long. It's why, why? Too much, you have to have a very in-depth emotional book for it, for me to be on board for it to be that long. Like, there has to be a lot of back and forth. It has to be part of the book. Like, is it toxic? Yes. Is it like Binding QB13, Saving and Redeeming 6, where those characters go through not only like character journey, there's plot, there's there's way more than just like a little tiny character growth. You know what I mean? It, it spans years. Like, these books span years and months. So, like it has to make sense to me, but not every book needs to be this long. Also, sometimes some fantasy romances are getting to be very long when it doesn't have to be. So yeah, I agree with that. Someone said Ariel has the personality of soggy bread. I don't get the appeal. What Ariel? Are we talking about like the princess Ariel? Because I love Ariel. Or are we talking about like a book? Because I don't know. Okay, someone said enemies to lovers is overdone in fantasy. And I I agree. I Okay, I don't think it's overdone. I think in fantasy romance, it's more appealing to readers, most readers, I should say, when there is some types of some type of enemies to lovers. They're they're forced together. They're forced to work together. They're forced together for ally purposes. They come from rival families, like those type of things. And that's why it's enemies to lovers. I don't know. Like, I'm not a writer. I don't know. But maybe that's easier to write than friends to lovers. But I've read Radiance by Grace Draven. That's friends to lovers. Love that book. And uh, Blood Mercy by Vela Roth. That's Friends to Lovers. Love that book as well. 
So yeah, I do think it's kind of overdone. Like I'm kind of over it. Like do something else type of a thing. Okay. Someone, a lot of people commented on spice. So someone said spice is not enough to form a whole relationship on. Not in a romance book. Give me more than that, please. I agree. I think that when you can have in a romance book, the start of a physical relationship, like they are physically attracted to each other. They go at it. They lust all of that, right? That's fine. But you have to, for me to give a book like five stars, really love that. You have to like, you have to really develop the relationship after. You have to develop the emotional attachment, the trust, the all of that stuff. I can't just rate a book five stars based on spice. That's just me. If it's spicy, that's great. Like sometimes I'm just looking for that. And sometimes I'll do it based on vibes. Like if it's a five star spicy read and it's all about the vibes, I'll give it five stars. But I do understand that most of the time I personally agree with this, that I want a little bit more emotional connection with the characters. I want them to go through things emotionally and I want them to connect to each other. So I get this. I get this. So it said it's not a special edition unless it has a ribbon. LOL. I agree. I didn't realize this with special editions. Like I have so many special editions over here, right? And they're not, not many of them have ribbons, but you know what? It makes a special edition a special edition if it has a ribbon. I agree. Someone said, I liked Mass Market Max more than regular Mass Market. So I have some Mass Market Max. They're just slightly longer and they're more floppy. So holding is easier and that's why I like them. But I personally like the normal Mass Markets because they go with all of my other Mass Markets that I have. Like, don't change something that wasn't broken. You know what I mean? Uh, but that's interesting. If you DNF a book, you shouldn't rate them on a platform. I agree. DNFing means you're not going to finish it because you don't want to rate it. In my opinion, that's what a DNF is. But I think on Goodreads, because it doesn't have a DNF, like they have a one, two, three, four, five star. They don't have a DNF. So most people just rate it one star as a DNF just to mark it that they read part of it. So interesting. Hate it when a character talks to themselves in dialogue. Find it so cringy. I read this comment last night and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I noticed this. I can't think of a time where it's bothered me, but I also can't think of a time where I've even noticed it. So maybe I'm just not someone who notices those type of things. I don't know. Surprise pregnancy is a good trope. I think it's a great trope for people who like it. I just don't. I'm not always a lover of it. That's that's the thing which is interesting. Okay. I was extremely underwhelmed by the Raven Hood series. I think I read this series when it wasn't as hyped as it was. So I was more, oh my God, what's happening right now? But I think it's gotten a lot more hype. And when you hype up a book so much, a lot of people find it underwhelming because it's hyped up so much. But at the time I didn't read anything like it. So I loved it, which makes sense. Okay. Spark of the Everflame new hit series to read. Yes. I am going to read it in March, I hope, if I can get to it. I'm, I'm using an audio credit for it, audible credit. I've heard Rachel from Ravenhead Reader talk about it, and she really loved this. I think she read the first two books, and she's really liked the series. So I'm willing to give it a try, because I know if she likes something, usually most of the time I will tend to like it or rate it highly. Someone said Kindle prices are getting to be too expensive for some books. I can't tell you the last time I actually bought a Kindle book. Other than like it being in Kindle Unlimited or it being free or it being on sale for like 99 cents or something like that. I don't pay attention to Kindle prices, which is interesting. I wonder how many people buy Kindle books outright versus having a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I've had a Kindle Unlimited subscription for like, I don't know, 10 plus years now. So I don't really pay attention to Kindle prices. If you do, let me know if you agree with that. That's interesting. I hate when authors get picked up mid-series and the covers change. I need matching sets. I will say as a collector, it is kind of frustrating because uh, they have like the bloom edition or they have like the publisher's little thing on the spine. It doesn't always match and the everything's not a place, you know, placed the same way. So I get, I get it. I get that. Most book to TV adaptations have love triangles, which is the least liked trope. That's true, but I've never noticed that. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, someone says, I hate cartoon covers. I am someone who I used to not like cartoon covers, but with cartoon covers, there's a lot of different artist styles. So you have the more like anime manga style cartoon covers. You have the more like realistic cartoon covers. You have the very animated covers. And I think it's come a long way since the like first cartoon cover that I think a lot of people, I think, I think it's different for some people. I really think that they have found that they like certain cartoon covers over the other because it's a different style. But I do know that once again, like the anonymous, people like the hot girl, hot guy covers and the couple covers. And that's okay. That's totally okay. A lot of KU books are forgettable. So I think this is interesting and I don't necessarily agree a hundred percent. Um, I feel like when people think of KU books, those are obviously a lot more indie books. And to say that they're forgettable is kind of eh to me because I'm like, 
they're not forgettable. I've read a lot of books 10 years ago, seven years ago that I still remember and I still think about. And they were KU books. And I think KU allows a lot of people to have access to books. Like me and Jess just did a podcast episode of our romance reading journey of my library doesn't have romance books or it didn't have romance books growing up. So I only had KU. I only also could only afford KU, which when it was less than $10 a month type of a thing. So I think a lot of people associate KU books with being indie books, with me, which means it's not edited correctly, which is totally false. There are a lot of KU books that a lot of people put their books in KU because it's more accessible. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I There's not many bookish takes that I disagree with, but I disagree with this one. I think there are. I think there are books that are unforgettable. And I think it's unfair to say that most of them are forgettable. I'm going to fight on that one. Okay. I don't really care about playlists and books. I am someone, I also do not give a fuck about playlists and books. I can't even tell you the last time I looked at the songs. I don't listen to songs when I read. I don't listen to music. I like to sit in peace and quiet or listen to the audiobook while I'm reading along. So someone also said Kindle books are getting uh, more expensive slash too expensive. You know what? I don't know the kind of, that was the last one, but I don't know the whole business side of it, whether authors price it that way or if Amazon just prices it a certain way. But I do know that if you buy the Kindle book outright, the author only gets a certain percentage. And I don't know what that percentage is. And I have a feeling Amazon may have lowered the percentage of what authors get, which is why it's gone up. I'm, that's just me speculating. I don't know, but also inflation's a bitch. Like groceries have gotten more expensive. So like uh, everything has gotten more expensive in general. So I don't know if it's an Amazon thing. I I only look at, like I said, I don't really look at Kindle prices for books unless they're on sale. But like compared to iBooks or compared to like Nook or Barnes & Noble, I wonder if the prices are the same or if they price them differently. Something I want to look into. Anyway, this was very fun to do. It was also very interesting. Let me know if you have a bookish hot take in the comments down below if you're comfortable sharing it. Once again, I want to say thank you so much to Ava Miles for sponsoring this video. Make sure you go check out the Paris Roommates Dean, which is her new release that just came out on March 11th. Like I said, you can follow him and his love story all throughout Paris with the, with the mysterious girl where he doesn't know if he's going to get his heart broken again and let his and let the past repeat itself. So once again, make sure you check out the Paris Roommates Dean out now. Um, I will have the link in the description box below for you. For the emoji, drop me a fire emoji. Like hot emoji. Like, oh my God, it's hot in here because these are some hot takes. You guys had a lot of opinions on certain things, which was actually really funny. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I just wanted to be sit down and be chatty with you guys. Thank you for everyone who dropped um, a hot take in my anonymous link or on, on Instagram. And if you don't follow me over there, you definitely need to. I post a lot more content of like life stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe for more content for me as always i hope you're living a novel life and i will see you in my next one bye guys